Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. Very important video, we're gonna talk about biofilms. So let's just kind of get out of the way what they are and then we'll talk about why they're so significant. So here you see a couple images of biofilms. You really see that kind of, that slimy, um, it's called an extracellular polymeric substance or EPS, but this basically, this, this gooey, sticky substance is secreted into the environment and microbes can live in and underneath it. So I like to say that the capsule that a single organism can produce is actually shockingly similar to a biofilm. So a biofilm is basically, think about a capsule over a group of organisms. So biofilms can be good or bad. We don't talk about the good ones very often, but they're absolutely, they're absolutely are essential, um, really, really good biofilms. But our big focuses on the bad ones because the overwhelming majority of infectious diseases are caused by biofilm forming organisms. So that's what it is. Don't worry so much about the EPS, but you have this, this basically goo of, you know, carbohydrates with some proteins and even nucleic acids and DNA and, and everything mixed together, even like old cell fragments from dead cells would be in there, but it's just this coating that cover these, covers these organisms. So why do they matter so much? Well, well, number one, since we're, we're primarily dealing with the, one, the, the negative ones, um, organisms that are in a biofilm are up to a thousand times harder to kill with antibiotics. And there's several theories about that. Some of them are actually hiding from the antibiotics and hiding from your immune system, but also some of the cells that are deep in this community of this biofilm, are they greatly slow their metabolism. And most of your antibiotics work by um, destroying cells that are metabolically active. That's why you got to take antibiotics for tuberculosis for six to 12 months because it's such a slow organism. Well, these organisms kind of turn down their metabolism uh, when they're hiding in a biofilm. So number one, they're just much harder to kill with, with anti antibiotics or anything else. Uh, number two, while they're in there, they're sharing nutrients. Think about like, um, uh, so basically the organisms that you, uh, use oxygen are creating an anaerobic environment for the ones that don't want oxygen or the ones that, um, the ones that produce um, methane gas or feeding the ones that like methane gas and all these kind of things. So basically the waste products or byproducts of one organism become the food of another. So they're, share, they're sharing nutrition and food, making them healthier. Um, they're also, they're hiding, they're sharing food, but they're also sharing DNA. So imagine the amount of horizontal gene transfer or genetic swapping that occurs inside a biofilm. So when organisms come out of a biofilm, they are generally hardier and more dangerous than the, when they went in. So that's why they're so significant. Again, the other reason I'd say they're very, very significant is if you're dealing with a biofilm infection, if you don't kill all of them, killing 99% of the organisms hiding in a biofilm is not enough because they will just quickly come back. Uh, the be best two examples I can give you would be, uh, you know, persistent chronic urinary tract infections. So if you've ever had a patient that has a UTI every four weeks, every six weeks, whatever, they have one, right? They have one UTI. You treat it with antibiotics. It kills as many of the cells as it can to, to control the symptoms, but since you can't, didn't arrest eradicate the biofilm, didn't eradicate all the organisms living in it, they just pop back up. So four weeks later, it's the same urinary tract infection. It's just you're, you're hammering it down, it pops back up. Another example would be uh, strep throat, like people that have strep once or twice every year until they get their tonsils removed and then all of a sudden they don't have strep very often or maybe not at all. Well, you could make a very strong argument that there's a biofilm on the tonsils that is, that is a breeding ground for the strep infection. So you're actually physically removing the biofilm when you take somebody's tonsils out. Another example would be SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, studies have shown that you, you can put someone on antibiotics for like eight months and you can see their symptoms disappear. But then when they get off antibiotics, within two weeks, it looks like you never treated them. So this is why biofilms. So biofilms are this protection for communities of organisms. Uh, and these, these are the many reasons why they're so, they're so important. All right. Um, I think I'll stop there and actually do a separate video about biofilm formation because that's important, but I don't, I don't like the videos to get too long. So that, this is what a biofilm is and why we should care so much about them. All right. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.